All right, hello, wine drinking people. We're back with more of what I've had to drink yesterday and our annual, or biannual, Madeira tasting. Um, we have because uh, how many people are in the Madeira, man? We've had, uh, I think, six people at the Madeira tasting in November on the 6th. Uh, we opened these wines a week before that, and then just this uh, past few weeks, uh, Saturday night here in January, we opened up and drank, well, I don't want to say the rest of them, because now we've got all of these Madeiras by the glass here at the Wine Watch Wine Bar. This is the only wine you can keep open for a month, two months, several months, a year, and have the wine not only still be drinkable, but I think all these wines were better than we had them on the 9th of November. We started out with this Sercial, which... That's the driest style, the name of the different types of Madeira or the type of grapes that they grow on the island of Madeira. Madeira's a fortified wine, similar to port, but um, they heat it up. They do all these other things to Madeira to abuse it, which it seems to like, because it lives an awful long time. This 1834 Tarantes was actually the wine of the night, the oldest Madeira. The grapes were grown when Andrew Jackson was president for this wine, or were they? Just because it says 1834 on the bottle, does that actually mean the grapes are from 1834? Well, you know, we believe that this is the case with this wine. But whenever the vintage of the Madeira ended in a zero, they usually didn't know the exact vintage. They thought it was from that decade or about that old. You know, the laws just recently have changed in Madeira to make things a lot more strict. And, uh, well, just like everyone else in the 40s and and when the Appalachian Control A law started in Europe, now you started to see things tighten down with Madeira. It's not until just recently that they've really become strict on what these wines actually are. So there may be a little Tinta Negra in this Cercial and the Verdejo. A lot of times they didn't blend that because that varietal grows at all different altitudes, whereas the Cercial and Verdejo usually only blend up very high. The Tarantes, the Bastardo, the Malvasia, the Boal, the sweeter styles grow down to lower altitude. So the Rutherford Miles 1934 uh, Vintage Verdejo, uh, this wine had a beautiful nose, walnuts, cashews, fudge, brown spices, very aromatic, some lemon citrus. These wines all have got really high acidity. Madeira is a volcanic island, and the soils have such a high pH. That's one of the reasons why these wines can live so long. The acidity and... Um, well, they're fortified also. They're 20% alcohol. So uh, the 1900 Verdejo also had a beautiful nose, a little bit more orange to the citrus, figs, dates, and a little bit of rancid oak quality. That's why we open these wines up ahead of time. They have this volatile acidity, which uh, because they've been exposed to oxygen for so long in the barrel that when you open the bottle up, this wine's probably been in the bottle for 50 to 100 years, uh, you need to let it and get exposed to oxygen again. It takes a lot longer to open up. The 1834 Tarantes, wow. The old Tarantes is to me, this is on par with the 1795, the 1802 Achilles, all the old great vintages of Tarantes. This one just had a cornucopia of brown spices, toffee fudge, dates, figs, hazelnuts, just incredible complexity, an amazing bouquet. It's like silk on the tongue. This wine had a lovely creamy texture, all that dried fruit, nuance, and spice coming through on the finish. This wine killer, um, the wine of the night on everybody's scorecard. Hey, there were only four of us here this evening. It was a great little Madeira party. And hey, that way we have wines left to serve by the glass of the wine bar. This wine, for two ounces, $350. You'd pay over $5,000, maybe over $10,000 for this 1834 Tarantes for the bottle today. The Bastardo, not my favorite grape. This wine had a fusel quality to it, decently kind of. A fudge, lemon citrus, the dried fruit character still there, black charcoal-like kind of quality to this, which wasn't as peeling as the other wine. Still excellent, though. Uh, the Jardim Reserve, 19th century. Wow. Wow. Well, this is from Henrique and Henrique's private cellar. It was first bottled in 1906, rebottled in 1969. And Madeira, hey, this ain't the regular the cork that came in that bottle. They have got the smallest little corks. I'll tell you what, talk about a short cork syndrome. I don't know why they would put the little tiny cork in a wine that's supposed to age or can age for hundreds of years. Um, maybe why they had to rebottle this one, but I'll tell you what, it was beautiful. A lot smoother on the tongue, maybe not quite as much acidity because of how old the wine was. We don't know exactly. It was bottled for the first time in 1906. They used to keep these wines at demijohns for a period of time after they took them out of cask. So we're guessing it's from the 19th century at some time, probably a blend, but lovely balance and uh, beautiful fruit still left here. That zesty citrus quality, dried tobacco notes on the finished fudge. Just a beautiful Madeira, most excellent. My second favorite wine of the night, the 1949 Barbieto Malvasia. I love the sweeter styles. This one had a little bit of BA, which took away from it on the nose. Um, 
Still have that lovely fudge, stage cigarette tobacco, and uh, a lovely amount of acidity here. Very fresh still, as this is a very young Madeira, 1940, 49. Two 1900s in one night? What? Are you kidding me? The Delavera Malvasia. This wine had this incredible nose. One of my favorite wines on the table here. I like the sweeter styles. It had a candied orange peel, kind of floral notes. A little bit of VA, the dates, hazelnuts, fudge. Really complex, smooth and silky on the tongue, this wine. Uh, like I said, we're serving it by the glass. I think it's only like 95 bucks or something for two ounces of this. And then a mystery wine. You know, we found a wine in a cellar. We had no idea what it was. It had no uh, label. It uh, had nothing on the cork that would indicate or capsule. But I knew it was kind of a dessert wine. It was in a funky bottle. It must have been 100 years old. It had bubbles in the glass. So we opened it up. And this wine... We're believing that maybe now is a Spanish Muscatel. I don't know the place of origin. It had a lovely kind of honey note, uh, some fruit cocktail, pea, peach and pear, and the cork looked like it was 100 years old as well. But um, unfortunately, our four expert tasters could not dissect where it was from. But that was our best bet, Muscat from Spain. All right, I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.